presidential election is being offered by the mainstream media as a potential solution, at least for those that are uh, disenchanted with the hope and change Obama story, which I think Obama, uh, the more that I look at this and I see this whole thing being packaged up and set up, I think Hillary Clinton is going to be um, uh, the vice presidential nominee or possibly may even challenge Obama. Uh, this all based on just many new updates, Biden approval ratings in swing states at an all-time low. And the new book called The Amateur by Edward Klein, which I will be doing a book review on uh, in the coming week, talking about a conversation that took place between, uh, he said, his, his uh, contacts, people he knew, his source, that were in the room with Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, and Chelsea Clinton, um, all talking about how Bill was urging Hillary to run against Obama in the primary um, and how uh, Hillary or Chelsea was very upset that she would not run, urging her mom, telling her that the country needs her, and that Bill Clinton had even gone as far as doing internal polling that reflected Hillary would completely destroy Obama in a uh, primary um, against the sitting president of the United States. So all of that's very interesting. I, I, as I've said for some time, the people around Obama – the banking cartels that support Obama. I mean, they support Mitt Romney to a certain extent as well. I mean, don't get me wrong. Romney's just as much as a globalist, just as much banker supported by the globalists. But they've come very far with Obama. And I think it's always important that the strong man that emerges from an economic collapse, they need to find the right type of person that has the right type of character, right? Obama has the character to take on dictatorial powers, I believe. I think that he's shown this with his, uh, the way he's treated journalists, for example, by using the uh, Espionage Act that hadn't been used ever before since Woodrow Wilson passed the bill. I think it was used three or four times by him. Obama's already used it six to eight times against journalists and against whistleblowers that have come out in his own administration. Also, the NDAA and all the other bills that he has signed, the new updated uh, martial law bill, and many more. But here are Here's one of the important things I wanted to cover in this video, because again, solutions are being offered, that's why I'm doing a solutions video. I, I, I talk about solutions often, but you know, most people watch these videos and they say, oh, it's just doom and gloom. Well, if you know me personally, you'll, you'll know I'm one of the, the biggest optimists really they are. Um, but that's for me in my own life, right? Because I have control over my own life, you know, for the sake of Obama and his, you know, minions coming in and, and basically killing me or whatever it may be, or America swinging into full-blown, you know, Soviet-style dictatorship, uh, as we speak right now, I'm in charge of the destiny of my life. So that's why I'm optimistic, right? That's why I think that as long as we understand believing in individual liberty means you believe in individual prosperity and the highest chances for you to have that prosperity. But again, here, let me uh, get into... Um, one of the main things I wanted to cover in this video, which was the recent developments taking place with China. Now, uh, the AP reported today that the U.S. is no longer calling China a currency manipulator. I think this is interesting because this is falling on the same week that we learned that China is going to be allowed to buy T-bills at a discount, go straight to the Treasury, bypass Wall Street banks who add a spread, in essence, giving them a bigger discount. Now, it could be China, like you and I and many others, don't trust Wall Street banks. Just look at the Facebook IPO um, and, and look at the trillions they've stolen from the taxpayers and look at the quadrillions in derivatives, worthless paper derivatives. Uh, but also the fact that they've now taken an easing with China, right? I mean, is China manipulating their currency? Yes. Are they doing it more than the U.S. is manipulating their currency with all the QEs and all of our twists? No. America's the biggest currency manipulator in the world. That's why this is... This is funny, but quoting from some of the articles, they said that the U.S. government said Friday that China has made progress in allowing its currency to rise and that the yuan has gained 8% against the dollar in the past two years. Now, is it that the yuan's gained 8% or is it that the dollar's lost 8% or maybe even more? I mean, everyone knows their trillions have been issued in QE and with bilateral trade agreements by China with many of the other leading economies, well, of course they've had to pick up the demand side. The demand is, is slowing for the dollar. So, 
Of course the Fed has to manipulate currency, has to print more currency, hence manipulating it.